Hey everyone, welcome to another review video. As always, my name is Jan, and in this video I'm going to go over the new, just the supplement for the Indominus box set called the Edge of Silence, which has the rules for all the new models, the new Space Marine models and the new Necron models, which is cool. So before I begin, there's a couple things about this book that are kind of interest me. Number one, there's no actual points costs. There's power levels but not points cost, so I can't go over points levels, and I looked and I didn't see anything there. Maybe there's going to be a supplement, maybe there's going to be an automatic, uh, like a, some data sheets produced upon launch. So I really can't uh, play with these in a, well, I can only do a power level game. Um, I would prefer to do points. But, um, okay, so we're going to go over the new rules, the power levels of the new models, and my thoughts on this one, both Space Marines and the Necrons. There are a lot of Necron models, so let's get through this, yes. Um, starting, of course, the Primaris Captain. The new Primaris Captain, he's five power level. He's a Primaris Captain, so of course, six movement. Weapon skill two up, ballistic skill two up. Strength, strength and toughness four. Six wounds, five attacks, leadership nine, three up. Save, because he's a Primaris Marine. Um, the one thing is, um, his shield is not an invul. It's actually a, a feel no pain, basically. Um, but it's only for mortal wounds. I thought that was interesting. Maybe that's going to be the new... Uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. So... I don't know. Um, but, uh, so we have a heavy bolt pistol, a mastercrafted power sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, relic shield. Uh, his heavy bolt pistol is 18 inch range, pistol 1, strength 4, AP minus 1, D1. Uh, Mastercrafted power sword, melee, melee of course, strength plus 1, AP minus 3, 2 damage. His frag grenades and crack grenades, frag grenades are a blast weapon. And he's a relic shield, so each time the bear suffers a mortal wound, roll a D6 on a 4 up, that mortal wound is ignored, improve the bear's save characteristic by 1. So I think he has a 2 up save. Um, so now he's a two-up save, um, and he has a four-up, ignores mortal wounds. His ability is, of course, Angels of Death, writes a battle, so reroll hit rolls a one for attacks made by models and friendly chapter units while they're within six inches of his model. He has an Iron Halo, so he's also a four-up and vulnerable save. So he's a four-up and vulnerable save, a four-up ignores mortal wounds, and a two-up armor save. So he's pretty powerful, pretty powerful. Not, you know, he's, he's more of a buffer. He'll kill some stuff in close combat, I guess, if something gets near him. He's more just, you know, stick him around a bunch of guys, reroll ones. Yeah. Um, Primaris Lieutenant, four power level. He's, once again, six inch movement, bliss skill, weapon skill two, strength, toughness four, five wounds, four attacks, leadership eight, three up save. He has a Neo Volkite pistol, a mastercraft, a power sword, frag grenades, crack grenades, and a storm shield. His Neo Volkite pistol is 15 inch range, pistol 2, strength 5, AP nothing, 2 damage. But each unmodified wound roll of 6 inflicts one more wound on the target in addition to any other damage. Mastercraft a power sword, which same thing as the other one. Frag grenades, crack grenades. He has a storm shield, though. Storm shield has a 4 up and vulnerable save, improve the bear's save characters by 1. So, once again, storm shields are not 3 up invuls, it looks like, anymore. Maybe they've been fixed. I'm just going to readjust my camera here. Um, but um, it looks like Storm Shields are not 3-up invulnerable saves anymore. They might be 4-up invulnerable saves, but it gives him a 2-up armor save. He has Angels of Death Tactical Precision, so reroll wound rolls of 1 for attacks made by friendly chapter units while they're within 6 inches of this model, same as the other lieutenants before. Primaris Chaplain. There's a 4 power level as well. He is, once again, 6-inch movement, weapon skill, ballistic skill, sorry, weapon skill 2-up, ballistic skill 3-up, Straight 4, toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, 3 up save. He has an Absolver Bolt, bolt Pistol, a Crozius Arcanum, frag grenades, and crack grenades. The Absolver Bolt Pistol is 18 inch range, pistol 1, strength 5, AP minus 1, 2 damage. The Crozius Arcanum is a melee weapon, strength plus 2, AP minus 1, 2 damage. He has, frag, he has Angels of Death Spiritual Leaders, so friendly chapter units can use this model's leadership characteristic instead of their own, if they're within six inches of the model, which is great. Nine up leadership is amazing. And Rosaria says a four up and vulnerable save. And then he knows the litany of hate. Um, and one litany from the litanies of battle <coughs> from the Space Marines Codex. Uh, in your command phase, if this model is on the battlefield, 
It can recite one litany of nodes that, is, that has not already been recited by a friendly model that phase. Roll 1d6. Just make sure. Good. Roll 1d6. On a 3-up, the recited litany is inspiring and takes effect until the start of the next command phase. Litany of Hate. If this litany is inspiring, you can reroll hit rolls for attack made with melee weapons by models in friendly units while they're within 6 inches. That's pretty awesome. That's cool. And then the Judiciar. This is my favorite new model of the Space Marine Codex with the flat blade. It looks awesome. Really cool new model. He's a 4 power level. Uh, movement 6 inches. Weapon skill 2 up. Blitz skill 3 up. Strength 4. Toughness 4. 5 wounds. 4 attacks. Leadership 9. 3 up save. He has an Absolver Bolt Pistol. So it's just the same as the other one. Uh, he has an Executioner Relic Blade. Which is a melee weapon. Strength plus 3. AP minus 3. 2 damage. And each of modified wound roll of 6 inflicts 1 mortal wound. Uh, on the target in addition to any other damage. Frag grenades, crack grenades. He has Angels of Death, Blade Parry, so a 4 up and vulnerable save, which is cool. That's Blade Parry, used to, I think, used to be the one that the um, Swarm Lord had. And uh, Temper Mortis. At the start of each fight phase, select one enemy unit within 6 inches of this model. That unit cannot fight until all other ed eligible units have done so this phase. That's pretty cool. Up next, the uh, uh, some more... Uh, we got the, uh, those, uh, Judiciar is actually an elite, sorry. The other three are HQs. Judici Judiciar is an elite choice. Uh, more elite choices. Blade Guard Veteran Squad. Uh, for five power level, you get two Blade Guard Veterans, one Blade Guard Veteran Sergeant. Um, they are the short sword and shield guys. They have a heavy bolt pistol, which is 18-inch pistol one, strength four, AP minus one, D1. Nothing too crazy. A Mastercrafted Power Sword. Strength plus one, AP minus three, two damage. Frag grenades, crack grenades, and a storm shield, which once again gives a four up and vulnerable save and improves the bear's save characteristic by one. So they have two up invuls, so two up armor, uh, four up invuls. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, they are six inch movement, weapon skill three up, plus skill three up, strength four, toughness four, three wounds, three attacks, leadership eight, three up save. The sergeant has an extra attack and an extra leadership. And then the Angels of Death keywords. Cool. Up next, we have the Blade Guard Ancient, the new Ancient with a really cool, um, with the really cool Ancient banner. Uh, he's five power level, uh, movement six inches, weapon skill three up, skill three up, strength four, toughness four, five wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, three up save. Um, he has a heavy bolt pistol. He has frag grenades and crack grenades. He has the Angels of Death special rule, a Stardust banner. So add one to leadership characteristic of all friendly chapter units while they're within six inches of this model. In addition, roll 1d6 each time such a, a unit, excluding vehicle, beast, and wolfen models, is destroyed by an attack made by an enemy model. On a 4-up, do not remove the, mo the destroyed model. It can, after the attacking model unit is finished making its attacks, either shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase or make one attack as if it were the melee. After resolving these attacks, the destroyed model is then removed. And Deeds of Heroism, Aura. Add one to hit rolls, four attacks made by friendly Blade Guard units while they're within six inches of this model. So that's cool. Blade Guard would be the Blade Guard Veteran Squad. Uh, that's all I saw with the word Blade Guard. Yeah, cool. Up next, we have the new Troops Choice, the Assault Intercessor Squad. Basically, for five power level, you get uh, six model, six or more models. Power, sorry, if you have six or more models, it's increased to power level ten. Every model is equipped with a heavy bolt pistol, a Stardust chain sword, frag grenades, and crack grenades. Their base stat line is movement six inches, weapon skill plus skill three up, strength four, toughness four, two wounds, four, two attacks, leadership seven, three up save. The intercessor sergeant has an extra attack, extra leadership. They, so they have a heavy bolt pistol, which once again I've gone over several times. Eighteen inch bolt. Pistol 1, Strength 4, AP minus 1, 1 damage. Uh, you can give them Plasma Pistols, I guess. Sorry, the Assault Intercessor Sergeant can be equipped with a Plasma Pistol instead of a Heavy Bolt Pistol. Um, and it's a 12-inch range, Pistol 1. It's either Strength 7, AP minus 3, 1 damage, or you can supercharge it for an extra Strength and damage. But if uh, you roll an unmodified roll of 1, he dies. Uh, the Astartes Chainsword is a melee weapon. Strength user, AP minus one, D1. When the bear fights, it makes one additional attack with his weapon. So they have four, three and four attacks on the charge, basically. Big whoop. 
So as I said, these are just assault. You know what? They're cool. They're a cool troops choice. They're going to get into battle, throw a lot of attacks at your opponent, and eventually do some damage. Basically, they're going to kill some orc boys. They're going to kill some stuff. But it's mostly just attrition and rolling a lot of dice. It's not like they're going to wipe out... Um, I'm not really worried about them wiping out a knight. Um, I'm more, they will kill orc boys, gene stealers. Um, they'll kill tyranids. Anything without an armor save, really. Um, you know, Imperial, uh, Imperial Guard. That's Astra Militarum. Cool. But they're a cool troops choice. You know what? Five power level. Outrider Squad. Six power level. These are the bikers. So, once again, they're bikes. So they have 14-inch movement. Weapon skill, blizzard skill, three up. Strength, four. Toughness, five. And extra toughness because they're on bikes. Four wounds. Extra wounds because they're on bikes. At two attacks. Leadership, seven. Three up save. Sergeant gets an extra attack. Extra leadership. Uh, they have a heavy bolt pistol, twin bolt rifle, a sorry, it's chain sword, crag grenades, crack grenades. So the heavy bolt pistol, once again, I've gone over everything except for the twin bolt rifles, which are on the bikes. They are 30 inch range, rapid fire 2. So that's pretty cool. Strength 4, AP minus 1, D1. So once again, if they are within half range, they get 4 shots, which is pretty nice. Right? And then they have the same, uh, the same close combat weapons as the assault intercessor squad. They have Angels of Death, Devastating Charge. If this unit makes a charge move, add two to the attacks characteristic of models in this unit until the end of the turn, which is pretty cool once again. So they get four attacks on, on the charge, five on the, on the lieutenant, or sorry, sergeant, um, hitting on threes, wounding most things on threes or fours. You know, cool. Turbo Boost, when this unit advances on D6 inches, the move characteristic, uh, sorry, at six inches until the end of the movement phase instead of making an advance roll. And finally, the Eradicator Squad. The Eradicator Squad is a heavy support choice, of course, because they have Meltas. Um, but, uh, so, for, it's five power level. You get uh, two Eradicators and Eradicator Sergeant. Five inch movement, weapon skill three up, blood skill three up, strength four, toughness five. Three wounds, two attacks, leadership seven, three up save. Same, thing for, same as always for the Sergeant. Extra attack, extra leadership. And each model's equipped with a Bolt Pistol and a Melta Rifle. The bolt pistol is 12 inch range, pistol 1, strength 4, AP nothing, D1. And the melter rifle, which is 24 inch range, assault 1. So it's assault, not heavy, which is very important in this case, because then they can move their 5 inches and still fire at normal ballistic skill, which is pretty sweet. Um, and it's assault 1, heavy, sorry, strength 8. So it's assault 1, strength 8, AP minus 4, DD6, damage. And of course, if they're within half range, you roll 2 dice, take the highest. They have angels of death. And total obliteration special rules. In your shooting phase, you can declare this unit will only shoot a single target. If you do, select one target unit for this unit. Models in this unit can shoot twice this phase, but they can only target that enemy unit. So, these guys are going to be the night killers. Basically, they're going to be the heavy, the heavy tank killers. Because you get uh, six shots... If you declare one unit, you get six shots hitting on threes. But of course, you stick them beside a uh, captain with a relic, or you stick them beside you know a captain and a lieutenant, and so they're hitting on threes, reroll ones, and hitting wounding most things on threes or twos, uh, knights on fours, reroll ones. You know, it could do some serious damage. DD6, AP minus 4, you're going to be doing some damage. So that's pretty nasty. 4 or 5 power level. I like them. And plus, you can see them in cover. Give them a good save. Cool. And that's it. That's it for the Space Marines. Uh, those are all the Space Marine rules. Um, basically, it's really cool, predictable. So it's a new captain, new lieutenant, um, the Primaris Chaplain, which is cool. He has the Litany of Hate, the new Judiciar. Cool. Blaine Guard Veteran Squad. They're interesting. Blade Guard Ancients, cool. Uh, Assault Intercessor Squad is exactly what you expect. The Outrider Squad is exactly what you expect. And the Eradicator Squad, I like them. Double shots with Meltas. Couldn't toit. It's pretty nice. So, yeah. Couldn't hurt at all. Um, yeah, I like it. So, next we have the Necrons. The Necron side. Now, the Necrons actually have a lot of new models, and yeah, so that's cool. Um, most of this, these rules are actually brand new models. So, of course, we'll start off with the new Overlord, which is 
just like the old Overlord, but it's just a new model. But the new Overlord is five power, movement five inches, weapon skill two up, ballistic skill two up, strength five, toughness five, five attacks, leadership three, ten up, ten up leadership, uh, three up save. He has a Tachyon Arrow, which is hilarious, uh, and a Hyperphase Glaive. So his Tachyon Arrow is range 120 inches. He's going to hit something. Uh, assault 1. Strength 12. AP minus 5. D, D6. However, the bear can only shoot with his weapon once per battle. So, it's cool, and you better hit. Let's just say that. You better hit, and your opponent better not pass their, uh, their involve. Hyperface Glaive. Um, range melee. Type melee. Strength plus 2. AP minus 3. D, D3. Abilities. Living Metal. It's in the Necron Codex. Phase Shifter, 4 up and vulnerable save. My will be done. In your command phase, you can select one friendly dynasty unit within 9 inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, add one to the to hit roll. Um, a unit can only be selected for this ability once per phase. Uh, Relentless March, Aura. When a dynasty unit within 6 inches of this model is selected, to make a normal move or advance, add one to the distance it can move. Cool. Six inch. No, that's not bad. So, that's interesting. Next we have the Royal Warden. The new Royal Warden is a big model as well. And he's really cool. He's a four power level. He's movement five inches, weapon skill three up, let's skill three up. Strength five, toughness five, four wounds, three attacks, leadership ten, three up save. Um, this model is equipped with a Relic Gauze Blaster, which is 24 inch range, rapid fire two. Once again, so four shots from close co from close range. Strength five, AP minus two, two damage. It's living metal and adaptive strategy. Um, in your command phase, you can select one friendly dynasty unit with nine inches of this model until the end of the turn. That unit can fall back and still be selected to shoot and charge. That's pretty cool. Another HQ is the Plasmancer. The new, another cool HQ carrying a giant scythe. Uh, Plasmancer is four power. Movement 5 inches, strength 3, toughness 3, sorry, weapon skill, blitz skill 3 up, sorry. Strength 4, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 10, 4 up save. This model is equipped with a, with a plasmic lance. The plasmic lance shooting is 18 inch range, assault D3, strength 7, AP minus 3, 2 damage. And then in close combat, it is strength user, AP minus 3, 2 damage. Uh, Billy's living metal, living lightning, aura. At the start of the fight phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches of the model. On a 4-up, it suffers a mortal wound. And Harbinger of Destruction, at the end of your movement phase, if this unit, if this model has not advanced or fallen back, you can select the nearest visible enemy unit within 18, inch, 18 inches. If you do so, roll 3d6s for each dice result 4-up, that unit suffers a mortal wound. And finally, the last new HQ is the Scorpec Lord, which is the gigantic guy. I love him. Seven power. One Scorpec Lord is eight inch movement. Weapon skill two up, blitz skill two up. Strength six, toughness six, six wounds, four attacks. Leadership ten, three up save. Um, he has the the Enmitic Annihilator, a flensing claw, not a fencing claw, a flensing claw. Say that three times fast. Flensing. Hyperphase Harvester. So the M the Enmitic. Annihilator. Who comes up with these names? I love them. I would love to be in charge of coming up with names. 18-inch 18, 18 range. Assault 2d3. Strength 6. AP minus 1. D1. Blast. So once again, that will come up to the new blast rules that I'll be doing in a future video. The Flensing Claw. Melee weapon. It's a giant claw. Uh, strength user. AP minus 1. D1. Make two additional... Make two hit rolls instead of one for each attack made with this weapon. So he gets eight attacks. Pretty cool. Hitting on twos. So he'll be killing some orc boys. Uh, or the Hyperphase Harvester. Which is strength plus two, AP minus four, three damage. When resolving an attack with his weapon, subtract one from the to hit roll. So it's a basically a, a power claw or a power fist. Living metal, united in destruction aura. Reroll wound rolls of ones for attacks made by me, by models in friendly dynasty destroyer cult units. While their unit is within six inches of this model, they have a phase shifter, so it's a four up and vulnerable save. Hardwired for destruction. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by this weapon. My bad's model, sorry. Uh, up next, we have the Elites, which are the Scorpec Destroyers, 
Crypto Thralls, Canoptech Reanimators. So the Scorpec Destroyers are 6 power level, and uh, basically if this unit contains a Plasma Sight model, its power rating is increased to 7. Um, the Scorpec Destroyers are 8 inch movement, weapon skill 3 up, list skill 3 up, strength 5, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 10, 3 up save. And the Plasma Sight is 8 inch movement, weapon skill 4 up, list skill 4 up, strength 4, toughness 5, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 10, 4 up save. So these Necrons all have basically leadership 10. Um, the Scorpec Destroyers is equipped with, one Scorpec Destroyer in this unit is equipped with Hyperphase Reap Blade. Every other Scorpic Destroyer in this unit is equipped with a Hyperphase Thresher. A Plasma Sight is equipped with a mono, mono, Monomolecular Proboscis. So Hyperphase Reap Blade, which is the one guy, is a melee weapon. Strength plus 2, AP minus 4, 3 damage. The Threshers are a strength user, AP minus 3, 2 damage, but when they can make one additional attack with this weapon every time they fight. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Bless me. And the monomolecular proboscis is strength user AP minus one, one damage. They have reanimation protocols. They have infused madness at the start of each fight phase. If this unit contains a plasma site model, it can be injected, it can inject tainted energy. If it does, roll 1d6 and on a one, one scorpic destroyer in the model is destroyed until the end of the phase, add one to the strength and attacks characteristic of a scorpic destroyer's model in this unit. Okay. Hardware for destruction. Reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by models in this unit. Cool. Uh, and then finally, the Crypto Thralls. These are cute little dudes. They're kind of cool. They have little double sides. They look like Tyranid. Almost like, uh, yeah, they basically have the hands of, like, Hormagons. Hormagons cost, crossed with, uh, with Necrons. Crypto Thralls. Two power level. You get two Crypto Thralls, and each one's equipped with a scouring eye and a scythed limb. They are movement 5 inches, weapon skill, with skill 4 up, strength 5, toughness 5, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 10, 3 up save. Their scouring eye is a, a shooting weapon, is a pistol 2, 12 inch range, strength 5, AP minus 2, D1. And the side limbs is a melee, AP minus 1, D1 strength user. They have living metal, reanimation protocols, bound creation. In a battle forged army, you can include one Crypto Thralls unit in the detachment for each Cryptech unit in this detachment. Crypto Thralls units do not take up a slot in this detachment. Protectors, Aura, enemy unit, enemy models cannot target a Cryptech unit from your army with a ranged weapon while it's within three inches of a friendly Crypto Thralls unit. That's cool. Systemic, systematic Vigor. Uh, models in this unit change their weapon skill and both skill characteristics at 3+, plus and their attacks characteristics at 6, while this unit is within three inches of any friendly Cryptech. So you really want to just keep them around Cryptechs, basically. There's Canoptech Reanimators, five up, sorry, five power. For one Cryptech Reanimator, it's eight inch movement, well, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four, strength five, toughness five, six wounds, four attacks, you pretend three up save. They have two atomizer beams, elongated claws. The atomizer beams are 12 inch range, assault three, so you get six shots, because you have two of them. Strength six, AP minus two, D1. And elongated claws, melee, Strength user, AP minus two, D1. They have living metal and nano scarab reanimation beam. If you're in your command phase, you can select one friendly dynasty unit within nine inches of this model. If you do, until the start of your next command phase, while the unit is within nine inches of this model, add one to reanimation protocols uh, roles for this models in this unit, which is huge, keeps them alive. And then finally, we have the same two dudes as before, the warriors, which are five power level, the scarab storms, which are two power level, but you can, um, so the warriors start off with 10 for five power level. If, if the unit contains 11 or more, it's 10 power level. Every model in this unit is, is with a gauze flare. Uh, five inch movement, weapon skill three up, let skill three up, strength four, toughness four, one wound, one attack, leadership 10, four up save. Uh, they have a gauze flare, which is 24 inch range, rapid fire one, strength four, AP minus one, D1. However, you can replace uh, it with a, uh, a gauze reaper instead, which is 14 inch range, rapid fire one, strength five, AP minus two, D1. They have reanimation protocols. Their number is Legion. Reroll reanimation protocols at one for models in this unit. Chemtech Scarab Swarms, uh, two power level. If you have four or more models, it's up to four power level. And it mean every model is equipped with feeder mandibles. They're 10 inch movement, 
It's weapon skill, four up. Noblest skill, strength three, toughness three, four wounds, four attacks, leadership ten, six up save. Their mandibles are uh, strength user, AP nothing, D1. When resolving an attack with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically scores a hit and successfully wounds the target. Do not make a wound roll. That's it. So that's all the rules for the new models. So we've gone over the Space Marine side. We've gone over the Necron side. What do you think about all the new models inside the new Indominus box set? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's create a discussion. Uh, as I said, let's, let's talk about this. I'm excited. I can't wait to build the new Space Marines and build the new Necrons and use them in games. I'm really kind of want, wanting some point levels as well to actually be able to compare. Power levels are cool too, but whatever. Yeah, so stay tuned for more videos about the new Indominus boxes. Stay tuned for more videos about the 9th edition rules. And as always, uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe to my channel if you already have done so. And a huge thank you to all my Patreon subs subscribers. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because of them that I can set aside some time and make some videos. So stay tuned for more videos. Talk to you next time. This is Jay saying, happy painting.